Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on the We Thrive podcast, where we share stories from entrepreneurs around the world about how they're creating an impactful legacy. I'm your host, Casey Clark, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Karen Justice, who is a change mentor. So thank you so much for joining us today. You are so very welcome. Thank you. Thrilled to be here. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I think one of the things you asked me is where am I from and what am I doing? And I'm from a lot of different places. <laughs> I'm living in my 30th home here in this condo in Frederick, Maryland. And um, it comes from like 14 states, two other countries besides this one. And so that's one reason I'm a change mentor is I've learned to deal with change. I bet. I can't imagine living in that many places. It takes a lot of years to get that way too. But. <laughs> we won't talk about that. Uh, we're going to skip over that part. <laughs> awesome. So as you know, uh, the name of our podcast is We Thrive. So what does that word thrive mean to you? Well, you know, I think that, I think thriving is being healthy, being fulfilled, and for me, being uh, a useful contributor. Okay. Awesome. I love that. So can you elaborate a little more on the contributor part? Um, I think yeah, all of us are given gifts of one sort or another. You know, a lot of people don't recognize the fact that they were born with gifts. They compare themselves to others and diminish their self-worth. But honestly, I think all of us have things that we can share. And I think that um, for me, I've learned an awful lot and just through living. And I feel that there are ways in which I can help other people avoid some of the problems or um, move faster through life or um, you know, find ways to get to become less frustrated with change perhaps. So I think that, I mean, there are monetary contributions too, which it's nice if we can make those, but time and love, those are the things that we can really uh, share and be useful contributors for the time that we have here on earth. Yeah, absolutely. Free and invaluable. <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely. And I love that you talk about how we all have gifts. I mean, I, I think, you know, so often when people hear contribute, they automatically go to money and it doesn't always have to be that way. So no, I think that's the beauty of mentoring too, is you get to contribute and coach and support and cheer on somebody else. And all you have to share is experience and, or just caring. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of experiences, what have been some of the obstacles that you've experienced when you've been trying to thrive yourself? Moving. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> Moving a gazillion times. Yeah, let, let me kind of like fill in the listener um, about the fact why I moved. Uh, I was born in Indiana and I went to nine different schools between the time I started kindergarten and I finished sixth grade. And that's because my father worked in the telephone industry and he was an expert at what he did. Even if it was on the lower level to begin with, he was an expert at that. And they kept moving him from place to place to do what he did. Mm -hmm. And as he progressed in his professional career, we stayed in places a little bit longer. Um, but we moved the week after I graduated from high school and my family moved again while I was in college. And the man I fell in love with in school, in college, got drafted. And so I became an army wife for 31 years and continued <laughs> Continue to gypsy nomadic life. So I think moving is an obstacle because, I mean, it's change. You don't, you don't have continuity. And for me professionally, that meant that I didn't have professional continuity. Mm. And going back to the mentoring, when I was in high school, I, you know, now we might call it a nanny or a caregiver or whatever, but I babysat for, um, a woman, one of the professional women in town after school. And she was um, in a rural area, you have county extension agents that work with agriculture, but you also have county at that time, had county extension agents that work in home economics. And she told me that if I had a home economics degree, I could do a variety of things. I could teach, I could represent uh, 
appliance companies. I could demonstrate them. I could help develop them. I could be on, on radio talking about them. I could work in childcare, housing and design, clothing, dietitian, all those things. Wow. So I went to school and got a home ec degree. And she was right. I did child care. I, you know, my hobby is housing and design. I've designed and decorated, you know, those gazillion houses. So, you know, um, the professional continuity was what I learned in school was diverse in that one narrow industry, but it was also broad and diverse enough that I worked in, I taught three-year-olds at daycare and I taught 73-year-olds who were taxi cab drivers. I've written for newspapers in Norway and I've edited child care develop, or child development uh, training materials in Texas. So yeah, wow. professional continuity has been a challenge, but <laughs> you I would, Yeah, I would have never thought though, like when I hear home ec, I think of the class I had to take in high school. Exactly, right. Yeah, and I would have never thought that that would translate to all those things and how awesome that she gave you that advice. Exactly. As, at the time, you know, women were, went to school to get husbands <laughs> or uh, not being one of those, although I did come home with one, but, you know, <laughs> we, you know, you went to college to be a teacher or a nurse. So if we, if there were very narrow uh, windows of possibilities that we saw. Now, there were many before me and many who were my contemporaries who saw the world differently, but I was the first one in my family to go to college. And so the wealth of experience was small. Okay. That's, that's very fascinating. I mean, times have definitely changed, you know, and me, I was the first one to go to college as well, but it was in a very different dynamic than, you know, like you said, I mean, people went to school to get husbands. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's still, it was probably a decade before me, but that was still the reputation in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very fascinating. I love, I love just learning about how things were even, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, even though I'm like, wow, you know, people think 20 years ago was like, in the 90s. It's like, I know. Oh no, 20 years ago was in the aughts. Well, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm losing right. track of time. <laughs> so. I mean, this century, you know, here we are. Yes. I remember thinking that, gee, many, when the when this millennials changes, I'm going to be 53 years old, I'm going to be fat, I'm going to be standing on the porch handing out cookies <laughs> to the neighborhood kids and wearing an apron and some dress like my grandmother wore. Well, yeah, at 53, you know, I was still on the way up. <laughs> Oh, wow. That is too funny. It's Our amazing. images when we're young, you know? Yeah, we imagine things so differently. I mean, yeah, it's it's funny. People always use the Jetsons like, oh, watching that, you would have never thought that some of the things, you know, in that we'd have today and then some. So, yeah, exactly. it's so funny. Time changes very fast, but. <laughs> awesome. So what are some of the resources that you have personally used to get over those obstacles, um, specifically with moving all over the place? <laughs> well, um, networks, you know, in, in one of my books, I say the fact that no matter where you are, create a network. Now, it's really wonderful when you can be in one place and your network can be diverse and deep. But even when you move around, you can develop a network. Maybe it's shallow and thin, but um, you make a one connection and you ask, I mean, this is part of that. I also was in sales, you know, part of those multiple checkered past stories. But, you know, it's like making a cold call and, and if it doesn't work, you ask them for a reference or a referral to someone else. And the same thing when you're developing a network, you're basically selling yourself in one small way. But if someone doesn't have an answer you need, you move on and, and ask them for someone else and someone else. And interestingly enough, many of, well, two or three of my jobs that I had were from other spouses of military personnel. You know, somebody who worked with my husband, you know, they had an office party, I met a, a spouse and they said something about their job. Oh, that sounds really interesting. They got transferred, I got that job. Or, you know, they were working in a new school and the program came up that I would be qualified for. I stepped in and I started that program. So, 
you know, it's all about a network and don't believe that you can't set one up even in, when you're new to town. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I met you through networking. <laughs> so exactly. You, never know. <laughs> you know, in, in Texas, when I worked for the Chamber of Commerce there, I, I was responsible for the leadership program there. And so when I moved to Frederick County, it took me a while to sort of get my feet underground financially, changing jobs. Uh, but uh, I decided I wanted to be part of the Leadership Frederick County program because I knew that that was an excellent way to learn about the community that I was now going to be in permanently and to start developing knowledge of, of and connections to people. Mm -hmm. So between Leadership Frederick County, which then led me to the Women's Business Network, which is how I met you, which then led me to the Woman to Woman Mentoring Program, you know, it's all about connections. But those three networks have been, um, been the strongest connections for me here in, in Frederick County. Fantastic. Leadership Frederick County is on my bucket list. I'm hoping to do it next year. So. Oh, good. Yes, it's, it's a must do. Yeah, I've heard great things about it. So that's yeah. awesome that it's been so beneficial for you. It was an entree. <laughs> You're already <laughs> connected, but it's, it's still, there were people who grew up in Frederick County who's, who learned an awful lot that they didn't know. So um, at, any, at any place or stage, it's a good thing to do. Yeah. And I mean, even since you've moved here, I'm sure it's changed tremendously. I mean, Frederick is growing like you wouldn't imagine. <laughs> now, every two years, it, 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 there's a different look to the community. Yeah, definitely. So speaking of network and kind of, you said, you know, you were here permanently. So talk to me about like the legacy that you plan on leaving and exactly what that word means to you. Well, to, to me, you know, a, a legacy is leaving something beneficial behind. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, do you know the story of Johnny Appleseed? I do not. It's a children's story that is based on fact, but the story is a little bit fiction. But there was a, a man from New York State who was a... He, he was an orchard lover and he walked through through the west the west means he got about as far as illinois but you know he walked he walked through the territory planting apple trees and so there are still apple trees in um ohio that are pieces and parts or descendants of the trees that he planted a hundred some years ago oh. and so he would walk through the country planting seeds and keep on going and so I felt a little bit like Johnny Appleseed in my life because the children in the daycare center and the high school in Texas years ago, um, what are they doing now? I'm always curious. And how, how did I affect their lives? The, when I was first out of college, I was teaching consumer economics, another thing you don't expect from a home economics major. But I was teaching consumer economics and teaching the students who were high school students how to, um, it was mostly life skills. And so writing checks, we don't write checks anymore, except for some things. But every time I have to write out a check, I think about the fact that I taught them to do that in school. And I wonder if they thought about the teacher who te taught them to make, so anyway, now that legacy of Johnny Appleseed is events and uh, written articles and children and people and coworkers and so forth in all the different places I've lived. But the more permanent thing I just did recently, and I'm, Thank you for asking, because I set up a scholarship for study abroad awesome. through the Community Foundation at Frederick. Awesome. So that's my more permanent legacy. I love it. And I mean, talk about a widespread legacy. I mean, I think when you hear of people moving around so often, a lot of people tend to think about, oh, you know, it's hard to keep lifelong friends when you move that frequently and, you know, develop those deep relationships. But I love how you have such a positive spin on that of like, well, yeah, I might have been in all these different places, but I was able to impact students and people everywhere. That is, that's pretty awesome. There, I, are, there are events that are still going on in different places in this country that I initiated. That's awesome. Yeah. I aspire to have that impact one day. <laughs> so, I love the fact that you have. It gives me goosebumps. It's a blessing. 
Yeah. Like I said, be a useful contributor. Yeah. And contribute in many ways, as you said, definitely. Yeah. So aside from being a contributor, what's the one nugget you would give someone who is just trying to find their way? Well, like I said, don't underestimate yourself. I think that that's, um, it's important. I don't, in uh, Bible school, when I was little, there was this uh, song about um, don't hide. I don't remember exactly how it went, but don't hide your light under a bushel basket, you know, you know, take off the basket and let it shine, let it shine. So I think, I remember I, yeah, I can't remember how it went, but you know, when, when I was going over some of the questions that you proposed you, that you might ask me, I thought, you know, that's, that's the thing. So my, my nugget of recommendation would two of them create a network be and be well there gosh there are three things create a network make part of that network a mentor or several mentors because we can have mentors in different aspects of our life and at different times in our life yeah. and um i think sometimes a stranger is a good mentor as well depending on how you meet them but i mean it doesn't have to be somebody you've known all your life because right. people that you've known all your life sometimes put you in a box not intentionally but they don't see your diversity. And that's one of the benefits of moving around as much as I did is I got to recreate myself every time I went. <laughs> I was able to and had to, you know, two sides of it. But you network, find a mentor and be, develop confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. Write down the things that you accomplish uh, on a regular basis and go back and look at it when you're feeling like, I'm, you know, down. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. There's a a different dimension to things when you write them down. I mean, it for me, it it seems to be more real. When you study teaching, they talk about different ways in which people learn the audio, the visual. I mean, and the uh, tactic, the can and the kinetic, mm -hmm. and the, the the when you write something down, there's both the visual and the kinetic aspect of it. And then if you read it out loud to yourself, there's another way. And your brain really absorbs that information in three different ways. So writing something down gives it extra power. Yeah, excellent information. We always hear that, but I never put it into, <laughs> you know, like I never looked into it like that. So that's awesome. So write down your accomplishments and <laughs> keep them handy. Yeah. Yes. Or, or Monday mornings or Saturday evenings. <laughs> <laughs> or Friday afternoon when you're like, oh, oh this week. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a good time for it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be my Friday afternoon ritual now. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I've never had a gratitude journal every day, your Friday, Friday or, or the end of the day. This is what I accomplished today because you really yeah. got more accomplished than you thought. Yeah, absolutely. Despite the fact that to do this is so long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to think about to-do list right now. The end of the year always comes with so much more. <laughs> so, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah. And you do it to yourself, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we do. <laughs> it doesn't have to be done. <laughs> yes. And that is a whole other conversation. We could talk for a whole day about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners that you haven't shared yet? Don't be afraid of change. I love it. Make that. it work for you. You know, I, I think that you, when you look at any particular change, probably one of the first considerations is what do you want things to be on the other side of that change? How will it benefit you? And then figure out how you're going to get there. Yeah. Be intentional. I love it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, how can our listeners contact you and get help to get through their change? Well, I do have a website, um, Karen Justice, that's spelled the normal way, K A R E N J U S T I C E dot U S, because there's another author who's got dot com. <laughs> she, <laughs> she writes children's books. I write about change. So, Karen Justice dot U S. Okay. And my email is on there. It's karen at karenjustice.us. 
And those are probably the easiest, most um, reliable ways to, and to find me. Okay. And where can we find your books? They're on Amazon, but you can find a link on my website. <laughs> so, awesome. The website is it. I love it. <laughs> I want to make it easy for people to not have to go through a hassle. Yeah. Especially if there's another author out there that has the same name. Right. Her yes. books are kind of cute if you've got kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. An abundant thinker. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on our podcast today. Um, as I said, I was looking forward to getting to know more about you. Uh, you definitely piqued my interest when I met you at the WBN Steps to Success. And I really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Casey. It was delightful to talk with you. I hope to see you again soon. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh-